What's up, YouTube? DJ Welcome asked me a really good question about running Game Boy games through the Game Boy Player. And that got me thinking, why not make a quick video showing the whole process? I'll walk you through updating Swiss, the configuration options I always change, and then we'll fire up some Game Boy games on the big screen. Let's get started. All right, so before we get into updates and settings, I wanna make one thing clear. We're assuming that you already have a GameCube that's been modified with Pico Boot. That's the foundation that makes all this possible. If you don't have Pico Boot installed yet and you wanna see how it's done, I've got a full step-by-step -step video that walks you through the entire mining process. Uh, tap, tap right up here somewhere. I'll have a link to that video where I walk through it. I'll also have a link in the description if uh, for some reason that doesn't work. Uh, but once we have that, all we need to do is take out the SD card and we'll move over to the computer. We put in the SD card and it'll probably pop up and look something like this. The We see our directories here, our games are sitting in here. This is a configuration file that we'll get into later, but there's another directory here that we need to see and it's the actual Swiss directory. It is hidden by default. So sometimes, you know, Windows doesn't show us hidden files, so we have to tell it to. So here's our folder right here. So the very first thing that I do is I back up my original folder. In case I screw anything up, I can always come back to that. Um, so I'm just gonna drag a copy of that out here. And perfect. All right, so now we are ready to update Swiss. So we go to the Swiss website, which I'll have a link for this down below. And it kind of goes through talking about everything that's that's new and different. I was on version 1515, revision 1515, and I want to say they're on 19. Let's see. They are on revision 1913 now and actually just came out two days ago. So this is good timing on this video. So what you need to do is up download this 7-zip file. And once you do, use 7-zip to extract it. All right. And then inside there, you're going to have all the different possible ways of, um, you know, how basically how, you know, how Swiss is compatible with a lot of different mods. Uh, there's Flippy Drive, which I haven't tried yet, but one of these days I'm going to I'm going to get one and give it a try because everybody keeps telling me how awesome it is. Uh, but where we are, we're down here at Pico Boot. So when we open up Pico Boot, this is the U2F, UF2 file that we would use to flash the Pico, which there's benefit in doing that as well. Uh, the, if you actually go to the Pico Boot page, there's uh, there's a pretty good process on reflashing um, the Pico. I'm not going to do that today. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I will I will go through. I'll make a quick video on how to reflash uh, the Pico, it's it's not, they, they don't make huge developments on it, but there have been some changes uh, since I've flashed this one. So it might be worth getting into. If it, like I said, if it's something that you're interested in, let me know, I'll make a video about it. But for us today, we're just updating Swiss, not the firmware. So right here, this folder, we need to extract to the root of the SD card. So the way I like to do it is I'll copy this over and then I will uh, seven zip extract here. And then yes to all, it's going to override all of our config files. And we should be good to go. So now we can get rid of that directory, free up a little space. And that's it. Super simple. So now we're going to move back over to the GameCube and go through some of the configuration settings. All right, here we are at the Swiss menu. And you can see up here at the top, I'm, I'm now revision 1913. And one of the things that happened when we did this update was it overwrote all of my default configuration settings. Now I touched on this in the, the Pico mod video, but I really want to go through it again and kind of make sure that everybody was on the same page as far as the configurations that I like to change and I like to set. So you hit the B button and that sets up this menu down here at the bottom. And then you hit the A button on settings. So 
pretty much everything stays the same. I don't change a lot of things. If you happen to be one of our friends overseas and you're on PAL, you can change it, change that here. Uh, it's not something I'm going to do. Uh, you can also go in and do um, sort of like a 480p, um, but but I, I just leave it on 480i because I I play my GameCube on a CRT. I don't play it on a newer screen, so um, just having the native output is fine for me. Browser types carousel. There's some different options here you can play with it. That's it's totally you know up to choice. Nothing uh, nothing too interesting to see there. So. Uh, we don't want to show hidden files. That's that's why the Swiss file is hidden, so it doesn't show up in our directory. Um, let's see. Uh, if you have a retro tink USB gecko, you can set all of that all that up here. I don't mess with it. Um, this is your sorry. This is your network settings. Hitting L and R kind of switches between pages, right? So network settings, I don't have anything going on with networking here. So this is a big one. This one's very, very, very important. In-game reset. So while you're playing a game, you can press, I believe it's Z, A, and start. And that will actually take you out of the game back to the main menu. So you don't have to reset your console every time. So we are going to app loader that one, right? Because we don't want it to reboot every time. We want to just bring it back out to the app loader. We don't need the GameCube main menu. We want it to boot up without prompts. Now here's the other one that I really like to do, uh, an emulate memory card. So the way this works is if you're playing uh, backup copies of games off of the SD card, then those games will save to an emulated memory card on the SD card. If you want to put in the original copy that you have of that game, you can put it, you can exit out of Swiss. It goes back to just being a traditional GameCube. You can put the disc in and then you can use your traditional memory cards, but they're not interchangeable. You can't play on your backup and run, I guess have like memory card saves and then you know, without transferring them to a physical memory card, they won't transfer over. So basically, once you're outside of Swiss, you have no access to the emulated memory card. But um, as of the last I checked, which I, I know they're working on this, so it might be updated. You are not able to access your physical memory cards from inside Swiss. So they're kind of two segregated things. So we do emulate a memory card. One of the latest updates was the, the MemCard Pro uh, game ID. I don't mess with that. I, I just do standard memory cards. Uh, you can force video. Um, you don't want to disable video patches unless you run across a game where it causes issues. Um, I, I don't don't really mess with the cheats too much. I don't force a video mode. I let it automatically set everything up. But this is there's a lot of video options here that you can go through and configure and set up. And then this last page is a per game setting. So if we were in a game at this point, we can actually go through and set per game the specific video modes and things we like. Some games have a do a better job at, at supporting higher resolution than others. So. But with all that said, go down to the bottom. We need to save and exit. All right. This is updating that config file that we saw in our directory, that DOL file. A few moments later. Got it kind of set up here so you can kind of see where what I'm doing. So from the, the main page, I like to go ahead and install the game cartridges from here. Then once we're into the game, it's kind of the same process as you would with the disc. You actually have to basically tell the software that you're removing the game uh, before you go changing it. So uh, we'll start out with a regular Game Boy game. And then we'll go into the Game Boy software. 
So now once you're in, you can see kind of the Nintendo logo there. If the Nintendo logo pops up good, you, you should be okay. If you hit Z, if you hit the Z button, it'll bring up the menu that the basically the same menu that you get uh, using the disc. And then you tell it that you want to change your Game Boy pack. OK, so we can use the eject button here on the side. Pops right out. Now we'll go to a Game Boy Color game. Uh, I got Men in Black. And then you'll see, uh, you see, you see how my Nintendo logo is kind of buggy there. That's uh, that that's a sure sign that you need to clean your pens on your Game Boy. So uh, let's let's eject the cartridge. Yep. There we go. Seeing a nice clean Nintendo logo like that, just like on the original hardware is a good sign that you're you're going to fire up right away. All right, so there's that. Now let's change games one last time. And we'll go with the uh, Game Boy Advance games. I got Tetris Worlds here. And you can see it's a Game Boy Advance games. The aspect ratio changed a little bit. It's got the, the actual logo from the Game Boy Advance. It, it, this was a pretty, pretty awesome piece of kit back in the day. And that's it, quick and dirty, right to the point. Swiss is updated, go-to settings are configured, and uh, Game Boy games are running perfectly on the GameCube player. CJ, welcome, thanks for sparking the idea on this one. And for the rest of you, if there's something that you've always wondered, drop in the comments. Your question might just be what I cover next. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, tell me your favorite Game Boy game, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next console project.